Welcome to an episode of Scavengers. This is Wendy, and I'm here with Jay. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and we are a podcast about selling on eBay. Yep. So today we're talking about um, how our week went. Right. Yeah, we like to do this just so we kind of, uh, I think all eBayers kind of like to hear the ins and outs of what happens. It's really easy to talk about all the technical stuff, but I like just to talk about the kind of stories that happen throughout a week because that's kind of the exciting thing about eBay is just like the scavenging part of it out in the real world, you know? Yeah. So um, I don't know about you, but we often have little mini celebrations here uh-huh. when we move certain things out of our storage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what was your what was your favorite item for the week? <laughs> I think we have been selling a fabric like crazy. About a year ago, we hit this little tiny church thrift store, and they had boxes and boxes of a wool of fabric. Some large pieces, but also just like smaller pieces too. And we bought it really cheap and then we just kind of stored it away. And recently we started to put it up and it's been selling like crazy. And we realized after going to a uh, uh, like upholstery store that uh, a wool of fabric just is not made in America anymore. And people don't really uh, use it because it's very expensive. So it's been a real kind of boon for us. That's exciting um, because it's kind of out there still. Right. Um, And, you know, funny, just today I came from a friend's house who is a loomer and they weave and make fabrics. And, Mm. um, you know, she's always kind of pointing to the value of the wools and showing me these different varieties. And it's kind of all over my head. So it's interesting to hear you say that. Now, doesn't she, like, take old sweaters and, like, take the the, wool from that? Like... or not? Yeah, sometimes okay. she'll felt it. Yep. Um, but she's now like she's kind of shifted into the next level where she's working on a loom. She's getting you know wow. materials from like farms locally and wow. yeah, getting the wool off the sheep. It's pretty incredible. But yeah, I mean, I think that's that's pointing to where value is in our culture for sure. Yeah. Um, it's interesting when you put it up against synthetic materials, which. Um, don't biodegrade and they have a toxic effect on the earth and um you know for a while people thought that was more valuable but it's nice to see that wool actually is even if it's due to its scarcity absolutely and then uh what else like is there any big big thing that that did you guys sold over the week? Um, well, we had a funny thing this week. You know, a while back, I had a little, like, you know, internet moment, and I kind of lost my mind and shopped <laughs> online. I think it was Christmas time. Uh-huh. And I don't usually buy new goods. You know, I like living in the waste stream. Yep. But I went online, and I bought a bunch of Ralph Lauren stuff. And I don't even, like, wear Ralph Lauren, but right. I got suckered in, <laughs> bought a few shirts. They came in the mail. I didn't really like any of them. They didn't fit me well. Right. And I bought them all for like 12 bucks each. And I was like, well, one day I'll just list them on eBay. So I listed them. And today we sold the first one. And I sold a garment I paid $12 for for $42.97. Wow. <laughs> See, that's a way to do it. It's so crazy. It's like if you're buying it brand new for cheap and then reselling it for higher. It's it's sick. Yeah. So we also moved some license plates this week. That was a new category for us, too. We picked up about 10 for a dollar at a garage sale. And I did a little research, which is half the fun. And I've been getting between like 10 and $50, $60 per plate, depending on the year and the state. So, I mean, is there a certain old? I mean, how old is old? 20 years? 30? Yeah, I learned that um, date is relevant enough that it should go in your subject line, so in your heading. Hmm. So like today or this week, I sold a 1974, um, and condition does matter. Right. And there seem to be some faves, which I'm still trying to figure out. Like, you know how states will change the color pattern? Yep, yep. Yeah, so things like that. (laughs) And then we had like a bummer. This week's bummer for us was Mm. we started selling records. So we bought a box of old records. We're like, I don't know what to make of this. We'll just figure it out and see if it's valuable. Mm. And it turned out it was. And we sold a bunch. And every record we shipped, the first like five, came to the seller broken. And 
I'm like a master packer in my view anyway. And actually our customers think I am too. I really am a master packer. So this week we sold (laughs) another one. And last week, actually, we sold one. Mikey packed it so well, had a whole new system. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. It got to the customer perfect. So we're like, okay, now we know how to pack them. So we sold one this week, and we break it while packing it. Ah. And we... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But we learned um, something from it, which is we're in a dry desert climate and Mm -hmm. records are plastics Mm -hmm. and plastics decay like they crack and dry and become brittle. Right. So it's just made me think like, wow, if I'm buying vintage plastic merchandise, I'm not I'm going to make sure I know where my seller is and I'm not going to buy it from a desert climate. That's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Do you ever break anything before you can get it out the door? Um, yeah, I had a thing once where we were uh, using uh, a plastic uh, shelving in our storage area, and that was a bad, it's mistake on our part, because I overfilled it, and one of them came crashing down, and, and it, I must have broke five or six things on that thing, so we ended up oh. having to build a wood shelves, so they're much stronger now. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think that just happens probably for all people who start doing eBay. You're just trying to get up and going real quick. You go down to a Walmart and buy those plastic shelves, you know, and then they're, yep. they're, it's good f- for some things. But, you know, I'm putting, like, typewriters on them and glassware, and that's yeah. amateur on my part. So we, see. we did something similar in the beginning. We had... Um, we put all our stuff in a room mm-hmm. that had our swamp cooler, which in the desert mm-hmm. climate is like an air conditioner. Right. But anyway, swamp coolers tend to spit a lot of moisture, and then they can also just kind of spit in some dirt from the outside. And um, it has a um, – I think it's salt, actually. Right. So there's dirt, salt, and moisture. And it was blowing right on our inventory, and everything that had metal – in it, uh, sort of turned like a patina. It like mm. faded the metal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Whoops. Well, so you know, it's the month of March, and we've been selling actually coats and sweaters. We probably sold more coats and sweaters in the month of March than we did all a winter time. And and I can't figure it out because it's you know it's almost springtime. I don't know why that is. Well, where on earth is it winter? Well, I guess it's, I mean, I guess it's still a winter. Well, it's going to be a winter in Australia, but I mean, these are people buying them in America. It's, it's strange. I don't know. That is strange. I don't know. I don't know why, but uh, I guess that's uh, one of the things about just having a store. I think, I think, and you guys are the same way. We are, we have more of like a, you know, a store that has everything. So we sell coats, and when coats don't sell, we sell glassware, and if that doesn't sell, we sell right. all all kinds of stuff. So that's yep. a good part about uh, it. That was something you taught us in the very beginning, yeah. never specialize. That's right, never <laughs> specialize. Or I, it seemed like the only people that are really, success, really successful specializing is, is, is only if they go big. Like, you have to sell a lot of, like, iPad things to uh, make a lot of cash. Uh I can see that. Yep. Um, We had another funny thing that happened this week with our sales, which happens a lot for me. I don't know about Mikey, but um, I found a Native American flute at a garage sale. Yep. And, you know, I I bought it for, like, a dollar, and... I happened to actually want one. I was on my list of things I wanted, mm-hmm. but I didn't like the one that I found at the garage sale. So I put it online. I sold it for fifty five dollars mm-hmm. immediately, <clears throat> and then um, I took the money and bought the one I wanted, which was a little more expensive. Wow, cool! Well, so I, I like when that happens. Yep. <laughs> so, are you guys mainly buying stuff from a uh, yard sales, or are there ever any like uh, flea markets? We don't have we well. There is a kind of a little rinky-dink flea market, which is more like a trunk sale where cars pull up and like right. open the trunk. Right. Um, they're kind of regulars, and I find that people who regularly resell like that tend to be higher priced than say a yard sale. Yep. 
Um, cause they get to know what people are willing to pay and they learn the limits and of course they're always pushing them. Right. Um, we really kind of focus on yard sales because, uh, it's all we have. There, there is an auction approximately once a month or when an estate occurs, like someone passes away, yep. but we don't, neither of us has the patience to yep. stay all day and like deal with it. That really but is But you guys amazing. do auctions. Yeah. I mean, it, we do auctions just because we like to... I mean, we're really into the hunt, so that's a big deal for us. But it's amazing to me that you guys can just get everything just from people's, uh, you know, a yard sales or tag sales. That's incredible. Well, when you consider that we are also a isolated uh, community, our town is like an island. It's surrounded right. by hundreds of miles of desert. Right. And then we're almost a population of 7,000. <laughs> so... It is pretty remarkable. Yeah. And and there are other people in town who buy and sell things, right? So it's not just yeah. a, a you guys. Wow. There's a community. We all know who each other is, and we're all friends, and we say, hey, and we how's the store going? Like, it's really very sweet, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's not cutthroat, huh? That's good. I think we're the only ones who watch everyone's stores. I yep. don't think people even realize they can do that. <laughs> but we like to get in bed at night and flip open the laptop and look at everyone's sales. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that too. I follow all of – it's my friends. I follow, you know, everybody so I can see it's when they sell cool stuff because that's how I – I learn about things, you know, I see what people sell and then I'm like, wow, they can sell that. And then I research it and, you know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go into Terapeak and just put in a category, a really huh. broad one like stamps or coats or watches or whatever, right. just to see what the highest selling ones are. Huh. I did it around Christmas with uh, Christmas ornaments. Yep. So... It was a few months pre-Christmas, and I just went into Terra Peak and put in Christmas ornament, and I wanted to see what does the ornament look like that sells for twenty-five thousand huh. dollars. So I would know if I stumbled on it. <laughs> right. No, that's smart. Yeah. Huh. So the way yeah. that so the way that you and Mikey work, the two of you both find stuff and clean stuff and list stuff and pack it, right? Or or is there a mix of work? Yeah, it's a little of both. So we go to sales together. We kind of split up. When I see something in the electronics category or he sees something in the crafting or textile category, right. we'll usually bring that to each other's attention to have the other person make the decision. But we come home from the sales, and then we dig through what we brought home for the things that most interest us personally. So he'll take a vat of stuff. I'll take a batch. Mm. And then each of us independently sits down and photographs, lists, puts it away. Right. Um, and I know you guys are different, right? You break it up categorically. Well, the way we do it is actually I do all the I, – I clean everything and take pictures of everything. And then uh, Ryan is the one that actually puts it online. She And then she packs everything too. So – Wow, so yeah. you get a break. You don't have to get like computer glaze over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then that's great. Yeah, and then I guess my thing is I'm really big into trying to find auctions and sales to its go to. So uh, I'm always on the hunt online for that. So um, nice. So I think this is a good um, uh, a segue to our next episode, which I guess is episode. Uh, a seven. seven, yeah, and that will be uh, it, it. Learning history through scavenging, or the or how to find the uh, value of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. And I wrote out a few categories of um, of chat on the subject um, that we can talk about. Yep. Things like quality and materials. Yeah, so uh, our next episode will be things of uh, value and uh, learning history through scavenging, and I look forward to doing that. It's with you, Wendy, because I know you're the one that kind of taught us about just all the waste in this country, so it's always interesting to, to find the uh, value in those things. So. Oh, well, I'm glad to pass on my waste <laughs> stream etiquette. <Yep. laughs> okay, everyone, so okay, we'll Jen. see you next time. All right. <laughs>